Hi everybody, so in this video we're looking at homeostasis in plants again and specifically what happens during water stress. So if the plant, um, if there's, there's not enough water for the plant to be able to replace the water that it's losing uh, from its leaves, what does the plant do? Okay, so if we just remind ourselves what happens, so here we have our guard cells in a situation where the, uh, the stomata is open. So in this situation, the plant is going to be losing a lot of water vapour um, through, the, through the stomata from the airspace inside the leaf. Um, and if you remember that this happens because there's a low water potential that has come about because potassium ions are going in and that's caused by hydrogen ions being pumped out. So this is what we looked at before and this is why water has moved in to the guard cells to open the stomata. So the next question then is um, what happens during water stress? What, what happens um, to solve this problem about water not being able to be replaced? So basically what the plant needs to do, it needs to close this, but it needs to close this as quickly as possible. So we know how plants close their stomata, but that happens too quickly. So what we want to do, what the plant wants to do, is it wants to um, remove water from the guard cells as quickly as possible. And to do that, it has to alter the water potential as quickly as possible. So if we, uh, if we just think, so again, hydrogen ions normally would be pumped out, potassium ions get pumped in. What happens is that a hormone called abscisic acid, also known as ABA, is released by the plant. And that then binds to receptors on the cell membrane. So these little crosses here represent abscisic acid, which is bound to the cell membrane. When the abscisic acid binds to the cell membrane of the guard cells, it causes the hydrogen ion pump to stop working. So hydrogen ions are no longer pumped out of the guard cell. Because the hydrogen ions are no longer pumped out of the guard cell, that's going to then affect the potassium ion channels. But there's more to it than that. Because the abscisic acid also opens calcium ion channels. And this is something that we hadn't seen before. So we've now got calcium um, ions coming in. And calcium acts as a second messenger. When calcium ions come in, that causes a couple of things to happen. It opens other channels in the membrane and those channels allow negatively charged ions to leave. So lots of negatively charged ions, lots and lots of them, are going to be moving out and they'll be moving out all the way you know, across this whole membrane. The other thing that happens because of the calcium ion, which is a second messenger, is that the, uh, the channels that allow potassium in close and other channels open which allows potassium ions out. These two channels, so if you just go back here, so we have potassium ions which are coming in, they close and then different channels open, so those ones close and then the calcium ions have caused different channels to open which allows potassium ions to go out. So we've got negatively charged ions leaving the cell and we've got potassium ions leaving the cell as well. That means that the water potential increases rapidly and that means that water leaves the cell rapidly. And that means that the guard cells cause the stomata to close. But again, this happens very quickly, which means that it's a very rapid response to water stress because the plant does not want to be losing more water than it's able to gain through the roots.